Welcome to the Beverage Click Podcast, discussions revolving around drinks with an Asian perspective. I'm your resident host, Sean Oh, certified beverage specialist and co-founder of the Beverage Click Academy in Singapore. And here is this month's episode. What's up, drinking comrades? And welcome back to another episode of the Beverage Click Podcast. For this episode, we travel across the Straits of Singapore to our friendly neighbourhood country, Malaysia. Well, more specifically, Kuala Lumpur. And with much privilege, uh, we have invited uh, Mr. Ronald uh, Binati right, to, to the show. And uh, Ronald is the current president of the Malaysian uh, Sommelier Association. Hello, Ronald. I welcome. And you know, it's really great to have you on air. I'm so glad to uh, be able to speak to you up close and personal because for the past few, I guess, engagement and events, we correct. didn't really talk much. Yes, right? correct, uh, correct. But yeah. you were always very busy. And I think what you did for the uh, ASI uh, bootcamp, bootcamp was amazing. Uh, that was how actually we met uh, Ronald for the very first time. And I must say it was, it was an incre- incredibly well-organized uh, event. But again, thank you very much for, for, for coming on the show. Yeah. And um, allow us to allow me to just find out a little bit more about uh-huh. your background. Um, so what do you currently do uh, on a professional basis? Okay. Um, currently, I am the assistant professor oh, in wow, okay. the uh, School of Hospitality mm-hmm. in Berjaya University, which is a a private hotel school in the city center. Um, before that, I was working uh, with a group of restaurants that also have uh, importing license. I see. Yeah, but um, that that company has uh, closed down uh, because the owner moved back to France. And um, how did I get into the Sommelier Association? Um, when I was working in the group of restaurants, I was also competing. Wow, uh, as a, very nice. Yes, in the Malaysian Best Sommelier Championship. Nice. That was way back in 2011-13. Okay. Yeah. So glorious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, during that time, I was uh, introduced to the association. Then after that, I was, uh, I mean, I, I joined and participated in quite a number of activities. Yeah. And then uh, here I am. As yeah. the president, after some time, yeah. some some yeah, I'm sure, and some I'm sure years. you did quite a bit of uh, contribution to be able to at least be in a position of uh, presidency, you know, to, to help correct, advocate yeah. about drinks and beverage. You know, correct, it's correct. such a yeah. I think it's such a noble cause. Um, would you, I mean, because you you are very open to different drinks yeah. and beverages. What's correct. your current go to and why? Current go to and why? Hmm. Hmm. But just subject, now you mentioned, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's very subjective. <laughs> but if 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 I were to Categorized as non-alcoholic and alcoholic, non-alcoholic, uh, of course, uh, coffee. Oh, okay. Currently, I I like those uh, single origin beans mm-hmm. from Ethiopia, Ethiopian tea berry. Wow. Uh, That's and very also specific. Yiga <laughs> Chef. Uh, if it's al- al- alcoholic, um, now I think with with age, you also mentioned in the masterclass just now, you wanted something uh, not so aggressive that you can drink. Now I'm more into white wines. Oh, okay. Yeah, specific white wines. Uh, I don't really have like a, a current favorite, but uh, yeah, white wines. Okay. I think we are in the same category. We're all in our 20s, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I drink white wines these days as well. I think red wines tend to be, um, well, unless it's on the lighter body, right? Correct. It tends yeah. to be a bit too heavy, especially for our kind of climate. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I do definitely agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the uh, Malaysian Somali Association's mm-hmm. background. Um, okay. Is there like a f- philosophy or vision that that has always been passed down, or is it something that you know you would like to translate from your own personal philosophy and direction? Um, for the association, uh, it's basically a non-profit organization started way back in two thousand nine. So it's it's fairly new association. And in Malaysia, we don't have uh, uh, a body or organization that represents uh, sommelier and mm-hmm. the profession. So it was uh, founded by a few um, what, old-timers, you can say old-timers in the industry. The old gods. Yeah, yes, yes, the old gods. Uh, because they, they believe that you know, uh, with the association uh, in, you know, we, we can elevate the status of the profession in terms of uh, the skills, the standard, as well as in education. Yeah. Um, when I started uh, joining the association and now being the president, it's always the same uh, aims and objective is to educate and to ensure that 
you know, the standards that uh, what they are practicing in Europe or America is is also being translated here yeah. in, in in Malaysia, and no doubt we are a, a little bit um, behind in terms of of uh, knowledge, skills, and standard. But we try to to match with whatever resources or platform that we have uh, here in, in in Malaysia. Yeah, I think yeah. never discount yourself or even the uh, the ability for a Southeast Asian country to Correct. be able to. Correct. Do, you know, to, to prove everybody else wrong because you guys did a fantastic job with the ASI and I think uh, everybody's very impressed by it. I was personally impressed. I was pleasantly surprised actually, to be honest. Currently, your, your, your member strength, is it? Uh, is uh, it we have around uh, 60, almost 70 members um, and a few uh, members are residing outside of Malaysia oh, okay. in Singapore, in Macau. In Shanghai, we also have one member that is currently residing in Finland. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they're still contributing in a way. Yes. In a way, uh, for example, like when we have the national competition, the Malaysia Best of Malay Competition Championship, they will normally fly back and, and compete. It's <laughs> just that, uh, yeah, it's just, just that. Just come uh, and compete. Wow. Yeah, it's just that um, because of the pandemic, yeah. they're not able to do so. So only this year, we have. Uh, a few candidates from Singapore that are able to come, not from China, not for Finland, because you know um, air travel yeah. is is very uh, li limited at the moment. Yeah. I know one of them. I think was Chuan An, right? Chuan An, yes, Chuan yeah, An. Chuan, 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 Chuan. Yeah, I, I knew him from Singapore. Okay, well that's that's great. And you you hold quite a bit of events and activities. Correct. Um, yeah. So competi the competition will be one of them. Yes. Um, the Malaysia Best Family Championship is an annual activity. Um, normally, uh, in, in this competition, uh, we try to have um, variations. For example, we have a few cups uh, under the umbrella of the national competition. Uh, compared to like in Singapore, they have a few competitions in, in one year. Whereas yeah. here in Malaysia, we try to... Uh, consolidate, right? Yes, consolidate everything so that everybody uh, know when to come back to Malaysia and when, when to prepare for this. Uh, competition. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. okay. So, how, I mean, riding on that point of uh, your activities and your mm -hmm. competitions, are there any collaborations that, that the association is looking forward to or, you know, reaching out? What kind of collaborations you, you're hoping to achieve? Um, of course, with uh, JSS, since we uh, got to know uh, JSS from the bootcamp, yep. of course, we want to um, extend uh, the relationship from the bootcamp to the national competition, for example, having them as one of the trophy sponsor, yes, and to have a, a specific paper in the exam, um, maybe who knows we can have a, a, a sake trophy um, for next year's edition of the competition. Yeah, yeah, but but um, other than competition, I think we also want to introduce more product. You know, in terms of. Uh, uh, alcoholic beverages knowledge to local sommeliers because in terms of um, um, expansion you know in, um, of of palate local consumer as well as uh, restaurants that we have mm -hmm. hotels that we have here you know there are more and more places that offers uh, non classical um, beverages. beverages for yeah. example like uh, five years Ten years ago, it's always French. It's always Spanish. The classics. Wines. The classic. But now, um, people or consumers are more open to experimenting, especially with uh, uh, products from non-classical uh, countries. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, so it's good that you mentioned like uh, the GSS is going in the right direction to to help with the kind of support. Um, and you know your country is there isn't without any challenges you know because it is after all a Muslim country. Correct. Uh, what kind of challenges do you face, or you know, as a, as an association, do you face that you think you need to try and overcome and need help in um, in whatever way that you know mm. maybe for the fire government or even just from a distributor point of view. I think from um, distributor point of view is basically. Um, Holding more master classes, uh, especially on on um, introduce the product to con new consumers, uh, but as as well as 
uh, for the sommeliers, local sommeliers, to enhance their skills and knowledge on, on the product itself. I mean, um, of course, when we talk about alcoholic beverages, uh, you cannot get any assistance from the government. Yeah, because uh, you know, in in Malaysia, it's kind of like a taboo, isn't it? Not only is it a taboo, but even in the tax bracket, it's it's labeled as sin tax. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so same same as tobacco and gambling. Yeah. So this type of taxes, alcohol taxes, uh, gambling taxes, and um, uh, tobacco, yeah. they are considered as sin tax. I see. So if you are expecting uh, government assistance, it's zero. Yeah. To You're not allowed to promote, promote yeah, it. But or that's why we have to depend pretty much on private organizations I see. and also um, organizations like JSS, yes. uh, Wines of Moldova, Wines of Chile, Wines of Argentina. Good shout out to them. Yes, yes to, 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 to really um, uh, assist. Yeah, It's not on monetary uh, basis, but rather on, on giving a platform to, yeah. to, to educate and equip the sommeliers. Because without this... Um, Master classes, you know, there wouldn't be any other uh, platform that is easier to reach out to local sommelier. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the um, the associations or any other non profit organizations should all try and work together. Correct. To try yeah. and, um, like as you mentioned, give a platform for, for people to express themselves and practice. Correct. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I completely understand where you're coming yeah. from when it comes to um, trying to get this going. So, how about you know? Let's talk a bit. Although you know, it's not all doom and gloom. You know, uh -huh. let's talk about the, the current trends that you might experience in uh, in Malaysia, and then give our, our some of our alumni or even our enthusiasts uh -huh. some insights about how's the trend in for wines or spirits or even sake in our current in your current market. Mm. Okay, it, it, it's 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 not like in Singapore where it's it's uh, the consumer are very knowledgeable and. Um, they know what they want. Like here in Malaysia, um, alcoholic consumption is very segmented. Uh, you have a group of people that are purely into wines. You have a group of people that is purely into whiskey and brandy. Then you have those that uh, is experimenting. Mm -hmm. They're neither here nor there. And, um, and they have money. They have money to spend. So um, trends... Um, normally, they follow trends on what they see on social media. Okay. Yeah. So it's whatever my friend likes, I like. Yes. Yeah. They they um, in terms of expressing what they they want and they want to uh, try, they are also a bit uh, reserved because um, what I observe, they they are afraid of making mistakes because there is um, no platform. Unless the restaurant or hotel has a resident sommelier that they can refer to and confirm whatever they want, then it's it's fine. But yeah, you, these are some of the the the, the loopholes or the, the weakness that I I see. I mean, restaurants wants to offer beverage; they have beverage programs, but they don't have sommeliers to like guide the the the, the guests. I see. Okay. So there there is a missing link, you know, between consumer. And um, restaurant owner, there is a gap where sommeliers are not there to to assist. Okay. Yeah. And isn't there like training or education that that people in the industry or maybe people who aspire to become sommeliers would take up? I I would, I would have just assumed that most of them would have if they have desire to learn more, they would have gone for some classes. Isn't there an education trend here? Uh, yes, there there is. Yeah, but um, you you do have like academies that offer certification, but you also uh, need to remember that the pricing of this certification is um, quite expensive, and uh, sommeliers the, the salary uh, is not so um, encouraging. Yeah, for them to not yet at least. Well, yes, yeah, so if if they were to take um, certification, they would need some time to to raise funds. Oh, wow. yeah, okay. in order for them to pay for this certification, mm -hmm. hotels do have um, 
programs where they sponsor uh, their staff, but then they are reluctant to sponsor because the trend is once you get the certification, you move to a, a better uh, establishment that can pay according to your qualification and experience. Ah, I see. So okay. because of that, uh, hotels are very reluctant to to sponsor because they are scared that their staff will leave the property. Yeah, yeah. Train them well. In the words of Richard Branson, train them well enough so that they can leave, but pay them well enough so that they can. Correct. Go, right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 I understand. Well, thank you for sharing a bit more about the education trends and what to expect from uh, from your current local market. Uh -huh. uh, you know, writing off the GSS Masterclass and daily because every, everybody can see me wearing the uh, the the GSS Happy. We just did a Masterclass for the Correct. association. What kind of suggested work do you think that Sake needs for us to go mainstream in in, in Malaysia? What do you think? What do I think? Hmm. Good question. Of course, to continue doing uh, master classes, um, but reach out. I think in terms of reaching out to to more uh, professionals and also consumer is uh, also uh, in equally important mm -hmm. uh, because we are not just talking about Kuala Lumpur per yep. se. Because you also have uh, East Malaysia. Yes, East Malaysia, especially in Sabah and Sarawak. Yeah, for example, like in. Kota Kinabalu, they have direct flights from Japan and Korea into Kota Kinabalu and they don't need to transit to Kuala Lumpur. So you have a, a big market in, 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 in Kota Kinabalu. You also have those um, people that retires in Penang uh, and they have uh, a, a big uh, purchasing power in terms of uh, alcohols. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, like, I, like I've mentioned uh, it's it's quite segmented, so um, need to really strategize for the Malaysian market. For the Malaysian market, whether you want to reach out to professionals, you want to reach out to um, restaurants, you want to reach out to consumers. So it's 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 not an easy easy uh, task, um, but you should be starting somewhere. I think it's it should be with the sommelier first mm. because they are like I said bridge between uh, and producer yeah. and also uh, consumer. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, social media. Yeah, social media is something that uh, we will not escape, I think, for the next 50 or 100 years because this is going to be here to stay. Correct, correct. Um, but it's good for me, or at least for even for the listeners to understand because I, even I had this impression that I think promote sake, I think KL will still be the stepping board. But uh, as you really put, you know, kindly put it, it's a bit like the US, you know, it's it's from East Coast to West Coast. It's, Correct. It's, it's yeah, a big it's totally continent. different. Yeah. It's totally different uh, scene or scenario. Yeah. And yeah. there is buying power. It's just a matter of understanding which locations uh, Correct. you need to put in a little bit more work in to try and yes. advocate. Okay. And language is also an issue, I suppose. Mm, language wise uh, I don't think so most of them uh, can speak uh, good English especially okay. those who, who who buy wines who buy uh, alcoholic products yes yeah language should not be an issue it's just accessibility you think yes accessibility yeah whether the product arrives to their area you know that's that's the other the other issue because uh, let's say you have a, a, a sake selling for um, one bottle, 150, it would be a different pricing in uh, East Malaysia, for example, in Sabah, Sarawak, because of the uh, cabotage, they call it, yeah. uh, differences in, in pricing. Yeah. And that's why you have private buyers that flew to Kuala Lumpur just, just to, to, just to, just pick to buy, up. yes, just to pick up the, this uh, product for those who are residing in Sabah and Sarawak. I see. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting, uh, well, it's interesting information to, to, to take note. But there is direct flight from Singapore to Kota Kinabalu. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not with Singapore Airlines, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, used to be Silk Air, but now you have, uh, was it Jetstar or Scoot? I can't remember. It could, could be, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I left the airline so, some time ago. Yeah, so it, I, it should be. Mm. But I did, I take uh, Silk Air last time from Singapore to, to KK. Kota, yeah, Kota Kinabalu direct, direct flight. Okay. 
good to know. Well, it sounds like we still, uh, well, at least Sake still has a future and uh, it's just a lot of work that needs to be done. Yes, in, yes. In, in recent market. time, I think after uh, the lockdown ended in 1st of April until today, I think we have uh, a, a big number of uh, openings and half of it is Japanese uh, restaurant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Half of it. Yes, half of it. And if you uh, go through um, directories of food influencer, yes, for example, like and luxury eats or KL food and drink, most of their uh, new openings are all Japanese. Uh, okay. Restaurant. I think that will also explain why there was a surge in terms of, like this this earlier this year. I think there was a surge in terms of uh, exportation. From Japan to, Correct. to, to Correct. Asia. Okay, that makes more sense now. Yes. To, even to yeah. me. Yeah, it's good to know. Well, lastly, um, do you have any future projects that you're currently working on or the association is currently working on and you, know, you hope in the future or at least in the near future you'll be able to you know, promote, whether promote a certain drink or, or hope to get more support from anyone? Is this something that you're looking forward towards? Of course, as a non-profit organization or association that represents Somalia, um, the project is to consolidate all um, partners yeah, to support activities within the association. For like example, um, what do you call that? Uh, competitions. Yeah. But since now uh, we have no, no more lockdowns, we want to restart uh, Visits because we used to organize visits to wineries in Australia, in Spain. Ah, Maybe okay. we would want to to do to, one for Japan. Do one for Japan, yeah. To, to to bring like a uh, delegation, uh, business, and also like group of sommeliers to to understand um, how they run their business, mm. and then production of sake, the areas, and then um, speciality of. of of regions, for example, but not uh, limited to just uh, maybe sake can also be because Japan also produce uh, quite a, yeah. a good amount of shochu, aomori, so, yes, uh, even their craft beers are pretty yes. good. Yes, and also uh, Japanese whiskies. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so these are uh, a few projects that we we plan to 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 do next year in twenty twenty three onwards. I see. Um, beside that, of course. Since we have already organized the RC boot camp, mm -hmm. uh, maybe try to uh, host the next um, RC Asia and Oceania Best Sommelier competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, Japan have to ho have to host it, and uh, first time uh, non Japanese someone from Southeast Asia won. Singapore won. Yes, Mason. Mason. Yeah, yeah? Uh, well. Mason won the the best. Uh, I think in a way he was not just representing Singapore, but I think he also re represents uh, Malaysia, and it was quite a bit of a proud moment for all of us in the correct, industry. Correct, correct, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a bit like, who knows? Maybe Japan will win the World Cup, right? Mark my words. Yes, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah you maybe. never know. <laughs> yes. No, having having that that's that that inspiration moment, I think will inspire a lot more. Correct. Songs yes. to 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 correct. take up the mental. Yes. Uh, it's increasing your membership also on the cards. Yes, it's it's. Increasing, yeah. We we used to have maybe just 40, 40, 40, around 40 That's members. Still looking to hit a certain target. Uh, of course, we would not be as big as um, Japan Somalia Association. They have around four thousand members. Yeah, it's wow. it's quite impossible <laughs> for us to um, to be like uh, JSA. But uh, of course, um, to try to consolidate uh, members and to, to make sure that uh, they can continue to practice their craft, whether it's in Malaysia or other countries. That's an, another question. But at the moment, to, to ensure that uh, the sommeliers that we have are uh, equipped and they, they do have some standards you know, compared to like uh, those in U Europe or in America. Right. Well, yeah. I'm sure we're getting there. Well, yes. at least you guys are getting there. We were, we were just, you know, we have neighbors, we will follow suit as well. Well, I think that's uh, also a good time to probably wrap up this month's episode. Yeah. Again, thank you very much, Ronald, for, yes. for being on show and contributing so valuable insights to the current Malaysian market and the trends. Uh, I wish you all the best 
Thank you, know, you very much. You Thank you for coming. Well, we hope to contribute as much as possible. As yeah, well. we hope to host you for many other master classes, 2023 onwards. Yeah. Well, as long as our association send us, we'll be sure, here. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much again yeah. once again. Yeah.